We're here with Women's Grandmaster Tatev Abrahamian. At the moment, she's the sole leader of the 2016 U.S. Women's Championship. Anna Zatonsky had a horrible blunder day with Queen Takes D4, and you said you checked your Fitbit. Is that something you did? You do normally? Is that why you wear the Fitbit, or you just happen to do it this one time? Uh, no, actually, it's a habit since I started wearing it. I just always wear it. But um, sometimes when the position changes drastically, I do it just to see. <laughs> Because I'm really curious about how it affects my play and like during time travel or if there's a big blunder or a big change. So I just I was just curious to see because um, like I was at the same time I was trying to calm myself down. So I just wanted to see just how nervous I am. And you said that your heart rate got up to about 150 beats per minute. 15. You, 115. <laughs> you like to work out a lot. Is it that uh, higher than it is when you're working out? Uh, it's about as high when I'm like walking really fast. Okay. And recently there's actually a match between uh, Samuel Sevian and Nils Grandilius where the two players wore a heart rate monitor and it was broadcast on the screen. Would you like to see this idea come to the U.S. Championship or in broadcast chess in general? I was actually really curious about, I've always been curious about that, like how your heart rate changes or like your body changes when, um, like you, you know, you're in time trouble, like something drastic happens in your game. So I, I think it's a very interesting concept. I mean, psychology and chess, they go hand in hand together a lot of times. So I think there's a lot of room for research in this area. So you'd be willing to wear one if uh, the organizers ask you to? Sure. Um, so this situation that you're in, that where you control your own destiny, you've never had that before. How important is that to you? Um, I mean, it's a lot of pressure, but it's good that I can just focus on my games. I don't have to worry about how others are doing. I don't have to think about, like, I wish someone was losing, because you don't want to have that kind of thoughts going. So, I mean, it's the best case scenario. You're here with your longtime second grandmaster, Josh Friedel. Do you think that his advice in these last two rounds can be more about opening fear or more about psychology? Uh, both. Um, he's been very helpful to me this whole tournament, predicted a lot of my openings, my, a lot of surprises with my opponents that he predicted them, so I've been well prepared. Um, Psychology-wise, too, he's been giving me advice, so I think both will be very important again. He's been wanting to get out and play more tennis, but I'm going to guess you're not going to let him the next two days, would that be right? Two more days. <laughs> well, two more queen blunders away from winning this. <laughs> and last question, I asked you yesterday if it took some luck to win a title. You said every tournament that you win takes some luck. Uh, today, would you say this is the biggest luck you've ever had in any of your U.S. Women's Championships? Um... Possibly, I've had some situation where I've been pretty, I had pretty bad position, I didn't lose, as I consider pretty big luck, but I think this is just such a big turnaround, so definitely. You've scored one and a half out of two against the top two players, and uh, good luck trying to win your very first U.S. Women's Championship. Thank you.